Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. Today was probably my busiest day since I've been sick. And how did that go? Um, it ended about the way it's been ending every single day, with a fever. So the amount of busyness doesn't change how you feel at the end of the day? No. That's great. It's interesting. Um, I had meetings this morning. Then I had running lesson for the Mitch. Then I had an acupuncture appointment. And then I had meetings this afternoon. It was a busy day. How was your day? All of my days are busy. Yeah, I know. Even Saturdays and Sundays. Apparently, you're not allowed to work on Sunday. It's Father's Day. No, I believe the rule was that you're not allowed to and work And you're on supposed Sunday. to spend time with your husband, who is a father. I don't generally work on the weekends anymore, so there's Good. that. That's awesome. So, I want to talk to you about something. kind of why Monday to Friday are so much busier. <laughs> Cut the I want to talk to you about something out, please. Mondays and Fridays? Well, they're, they're, they've studied that before. It's because people try to cram a bunch of stuff in at the end of the week, and people at the beginning of the week are thinking that a whole bunch of fires were lit over the weekend. Well, I actually said that's why Monday to Friday are so much busier. Oh, I thought you said Monday and Friday. No. So let us have a chat about one of the new terms affecting society today. Cancel culture. Can you define it? <laughs> Do you really want me to define it? Sure. Are you prepared to put an E on this episode? Because then I'm going to define it from the pop culture dictionary. Cancel culture. The culture of pussy ass bitches that like to cancel everything because it mildly offended them once. Got it. So what the, <laughs> what the pop culture dictionary says is cancel culture refers to the popular practice of withdrawing support for, i.e. canceling, Public figures and companies, after they have done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Cancel culture is generally discussed as being performed on social media in the form of group shaming. Now, kind of bothers me because I've seen people get canceled over one comment they made or a, like tweet, or a tweet that was taken completely out of context. Right. Like... It's the typical symptom of today where people's attention span is about 0.3 seconds. And they can't pay attention long enough to figure out whether the person is actually offensive or, you know, if they're just being snowflakes about it. Yeah. I mean, also, why does it matter if a person is actually offensive? Um. Just curious. If you don't like them and you're bothered by them, don't follow them. Well, okay. People fall on two sides of this issue as well. See if you can guess which side I'm on. Some people think cancel culture is a mob mentality. And others think it's a long way, long time overdue way of speaking the truth to power. It's clearly version A. Yeah, that's where I fall. And, like, <laughs> even if they do something, someone wears a dress people don't like, and they cancel them. Because people are children. I can't even. There's a list nope. here. I hate everybody. There's a list here. In 2019 alone, the people who faced being canceled were R. Kelly, Kanye West, Scarlett Johansson, and Gina Rodriguez, um, and comedians like Kevin Hart. And Shane Gillis, because they made homophobic and racist jokes. 
Okay. Hart actually withdrew from hosting the Oscars because of it. But yet, because of all that, this is the thing, too. His movies were still successful. Interesting. It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, when do you think cancel culture began? I have a pretty good idea when I think it began. But when I do have you no think idea. I it think wasn't it started, a thing when I was a child. I think it started with the Me Too movement. And it's one of the things I've told you on the show before that I wrestle with. Like, when someone says something happened to them, I want to believe them. Because I think that's the fairest approach, believing them. But the problem is, they carry it over to this. But why do I have to believe you? that? So you're offended. Okay, I believe you that you're offended. But why does that mean I should stop listening to... Like, I guarantee you, that 70s show, going to come off, off all of the streaming services now. You know, I'm actually surprised it didn't when the allegations began. Because if you'll remember, we were watching The Ranch, and they killed his character off. Yeah. And uh, that was just from the allegations. But you notice they didn't kill kill his character. Like, they gave his character the opportunity to come A back. to come back, yeah. But now they'll kill his character, though. They'll find a body or something. <laughs> but okay, but then that begs the question. Do these people deserve that treatment for making one mistake? And is the know. answer potentially, it depends on the mistake? Well, my question is, do all of the other people who were involved in making that 70s show deserve to have their show taken off the air? Yeah. Because one of the cast members made a mistake? Well, a ser- apparently it's a series of mistakes. And then, you know, there's this point that cancel culture actually helps some artists. Okay. Like Louis C.K. His career kind of went on a hiatus for 10 months. And then he came back and he sold out dozens and dozens of shows. Okay. After there were some documentaries about R. Kelly and Michael Jackson and their lascivious behavior... Their streams in music increased rather than decreased. Mm-hmm. So, attempting to cancel somebody seems to create sympathy for that somebody. If they're found that they were innocent of what they were being accused of, yeah. Louis C.K. was never found innocent or guilty, but people had sympathy for him. Michael Jackson is dead. He can't say whether he's innocent or guilty. People have sen- uh, um, uh, sympathy for him. It's, it's sad that people lose everything that they have because of a joke or a comment that they make. Um, and then you say to yourself, how many of the people who are canceling this celebrity have said something exactly the same or similar before? I would think most of. Like, how many people could we be friends with if we started canceling them because of things that they say? <laughs> None. We'd lose a lot of friends. We would have to. We'd have to get rid of a bunch of friends because <laughs> we have friends that say some interesting crap. <laughs> crap that specifically comes out when you play yeah, cards against humanity with them. It's kind of, I don't know. Somebody on Twitter put a thing that says, I'm going to start saying to people, you're canceled. It's, it's crazy. And now that cancel culture is leading over into, you know, businesses being forced to change their branding and their name because people are offended by the alleged racist connotations of their brand or their name. When really the people alleging that certain brands are racist have no idea what the actual history is of the brand. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. As a private business, you have a choice to change your brand or not. So I get it. If they want to change their brand, let them. But we have a history in our country. And I'm sorry, good or bad, if there's a statue somewhere of somebody, it's there for a reason. It got erected for a reason. And, like, I saw something funny from Adam Carolla today, and he said, Hey, why don't we knock down all the offensive statues, 
but keep the base. And then celebrities and rich people can bid to have their own statue put up there. And, and then, then when that rich person is found to be like a rapey murderer, we can knock down their statue and have something to do in and, 20 years. And then all of the money raised can go to schools. And then in about 20 years, some, a bunch of people are going to be offended by those statues. We're going to take them down and do it all over again. I see. So you're saying, without even knowing what Adam Carolla said, I agreed with it. Yes. That's awesome. But that's, how, but that's a sad commentary on our society. That you can almost predict with a certainty that it's going to offend somebody at some point. But let's not forget that one of the states in Australia wants to rename itself because it's named after Queen Victoria and apparently <sighs> she's the bad. Okay. Back when I was growing up in the early 70s, in the late 60s, everyone was mortified because women were wearing bikinis. And the bikini basically looked like a, a granny panty with, you know, a bra on the top. And like a really conservative bra at that. Uh-huh. And they had a cow about it. Oh, my God. They're, they're showing skin. Well, now I here we are. I can see an inch of their midsection. You know, now we're here. And like on LinkedIn this past week, I think it was yesterday, I got a connection request. And my Apple phone, will, at some point when the app updated, it now sends me a photo of the person and their name and that they would like to connect. And I get this woman who's, who I don't know if she's naked from the bottom part, but she's definitely naked on the top part, covering her breasts with her hands on LinkedIn. Was her profile that she was in the sex industry? I didn't look at it. Interesting. But, like, that's my point is, like, we've changed. I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent, but we've changed, and it always happens. The pendulum swings back and forth and back and forth, and it's why I go crazy. Like, all these people on Twitter are saying, we need to get rid of Donald Trump and replace him with Joe Biden. Joe Biden will be such a much less corrupt person. Is this the same Joe Biden whose son Hunter got paid millions of dollars to work in an industry he knew nothing about? Is that the same Joe Biden who offered access to him and the president so that his son could get that job? But he's not corrupt. <laughs> I mean, all I got to tell you is the guy's been in office since the 70s. That should be enough to know he's corrupt. <laughs> and you know, the Trumpster, he's a buffoon. He's a terrible president. He's a terrible human being. But man, he's going to win re-election because these guys are going to bumble it. They're going to completely screw it up. Hashtag either that, Joe Jorgensen 2020. Either that, yes. Either that or that guy, Biden, is going to drop dead before the election. You know, I was saying earlier that he better pick a good vice president because he's going to get, like, removed from office because he'll be incapacitated. Well, you know how they kept like screaming? Like the middle of his first hundred days. You know how they kept screaming for his President Trump's cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment and have him removed from office for having mental deficiencies? Yeah. How can they not ask the same thing with Biden? I mean, he has said some of the dumbest stuff. I was reading earlier today on Twitter an exact quote, which I looked up, and it is an exact quote, from Biden. And I'm going to tell you I've read it to three people and not a single person could tell me what the sentence said. Are you going to read it to me now? I can't because I have to go find it and we don't have time for that right now. You can tell me later then. But these people are, that vote are expecting to keep voting Republican and Democrat and somehow get a different result. Isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result? <laughs> I mean, basically between Republicans and Democrats, it's been split 50-50 as to who's been president. And here we are. Yeah. Come on so now. It's not, it's not like, I'm sorry, it's not like they can say that, oh, Republicans are president 90% of the time. That's why it's such a mess. Or Democrats are president 90% of the time. That's why it's such a mess. No, they both basically had a 50-50. So the reason it's a mess is because they both suck. Yep, they both suck. And until people wise up and stop voting for the same old BS, we're going to be stuck with the same old problems. Like... Biden, oh, we need a leader who can lead us to change through all this. Where were you the last 50 years? 
He actually made a statement that he did not think that black students, this was in the 70s, that black students should be integrated into schools because it would create a racial jungle in the schools. Oh, Jesus. That's a Biden quote. That's unpleasant. This is the same dude who said, if you don't know whether to vote for me or Trump, you ain't black. (laughs) You just put those two things together. I can't even. And then you got Trump who, you know, he's constantly, constantly, constantly praising racists. And, you know, I know he's done things for the black community. I know he has. But it's like I told you before. If I come home every day and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then I beat the hell out of you, do I really love you? Not particularly. Well, you might, but so if it's I kind say, of a gross, sick, nasty, weird love. So if I say I'm President Trump and I say, okay, I'm going to get this bill to help people who are black that are in jail get out of jail. But hey, you racist guys, feel free to beat the hell out of them because I'm not going to prosecute you. Really? <laughs> How can you say you protected black people when you do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's lots of reasons he shouldn't be president. And now you've listed maybe two or three of the most obvious ones. That's why you need to vote for Joe Jorgensen, libertarian candidate for president. She can fix this mess. Or at least, or at least provide a different perspective on the mess. Send it in a different path. Let's not... Do the insanity thing again. Well, Let's if you th- try something new. If you think about it, imagine if you ended up with a Republican Senate, Democrat House, and a Libertarian President. Now we're talking. Because the Libertarian President is going to affect justice issues. They're going to affect which bills get signed and which don't. You want true change? You have to truly change. Because a good portion of the Libertarian views live in moderate land... They'll relate to both parties on different issues, which is exactly. nice, and not always be a contentious giant fight. Right. I think, nothing you, I, think, done. I think you're absolutely 100% correct about that. I and think that things would get accomplished more often. And especially if the libertarian can be kind of pragmatic and realize that, you know, I'm not going to take office and then dismantle the government in one week. Something that worked particularly well in Canada was when... Um, when they elected a either way minority government because there's more than two parties in Canada you can be the leaders without being the majority right um because then if the liberals were the minority government and the conservatives were the official opposition the ndp sides with each one of them sometimes and you got more fair things done rather you mean, than just you mean one the agenda. party you mean the party that did so well an election back and um, had posted on their website what their priorities were and then everyone was shocked when they worked down their priority list? No, I, I'm talking about the Canadian, not the Alberta one. Okay. You're, you're talking about the Alberta NDP. Got it. That's different. I always laugh at that story because it's like, I'm going to vote for them. I want change. I'm voting for them. And then it's, wait a minute. I don't like that. Well, we said it on our website that we were going to do it and they're, we're doing it. They're the only political party I've ever seen run on a platform and then in their first year in office, do work it. their way almost through the entire thing, doing exactly what they said they were going to do, and then not get reelected again in the next election. Oh, yeah, that's why, because people didn't pay attention. People that are was a protest wrongs. vote. That was a protest vote. People are morons. Anyway, the people of Twitter are super uneasy. People of Twitter tend to be the worst. Nobody knows what to say because they don't want to say something and have some lunatic jump down their throat. Um, I mean, I merely said today to, um, I merely said today to vote, not to vote Democrat or Republican. And I was told to get my head out of my ass. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Well, you know, get my head out of my ass. Yeah. It was, it was great. It was like one of those moments. Well, you know, I guess on that happy note where you can pull your head out of your ass, I am too tired to pull my head out of my ass. So, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye. You've been canceled. Thank you for listening to The Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.